This gentleman is a scientist. To be more precise, this is Professor Smith. Just as it has for all of us, the world has dramatically changed around him. Over the past few years and decades, Professor Smith has watched his hometown expand, the traffic grow heavier, and the air pollution get worse. He has been to the North Pole, where he saw the ice melting, and to the rainforest, where the trees have been slashed and burned. And he's seen roaring storms and torrential rain across many parts of our planet, and watched raging fires devastating the countryside. Oh dear, what will become of us, Professor Smith wonders. It all happened so quickly, and nobody seems to remember what it used to be like a long time ago, when it all started, and how we got here. Or has it changed, after all? Well, in the archive, Professor Smith considers it hmm. should be possible to find what he is looking for in the data library. Historical maps of the city, old data on the polar ice, images of the rainforest and of the undamaged countryside. But what exactly is he supposed to be looking for? Archiving images and data for future generations is a Herculean task. Which data formats will stand the test of time? What about technical innovations? And how can historical data be clearly identified and merge with current findings? Experts at ESA's Earth Observation Data Centre in Frascati pose these questions all the time. Every day, terabytes of fresh data arrive at ESA, scientific images and measurements made by a dozen European Union and ESA satellites, which scan our planet day and night. They have been adding to the data accumulated almost non-stop over the past 30 years. Thousands of scientists and operational services work with these data as they receive them in real time. And then, well, the data and images are archived. And now Professor Smith is hunting for them. Giant robots work here. Hard disk drives and other storage media are stacked along the walls, just like books piled up in a library. Professor Smith needs long-term series of data about melting ice. He also needs a 20-year-old high-resolution map of the city and dozens of radar images of an exact spot in the rainforest. He finds all of them. Lucky him! He realises every single one of these millions of images is precisely geocoded and validated and that they have been made compatible with the most recent ones. He even finds historic weather data which have been copied back and forth many times because the original format is out of date and the hard disk has crashed. They are all there, with the information he needs to work out a new model for climate change. Let's now have a look at the copy robots. They work day and night to extract what is needed from somewhere in the world from ESA's data trove. And in return, they are fed with fresh data, new terabytes every day, that will allow future scientists to look back into the history of our planet Earth and look ahead. By then, Professor Smith will have started enjoying his well-earned retirement.